30, almost 30 attendees. <laughs> thank you for joining so early. Thank you for being here. Um, hi, Cosim. <laughs> <laughs> and Amita, Emmanuel, Ruan, Sergio, Daniel, or, or Daniel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mispronouncing your names. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to start in just about a few seconds. Just just fixing some some things. OK, if you if you want to hear us, you have to click Hi. on your screen. Hello, hello. Maria, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you, Kingsley. Hello. We hear you. Hi. We hear you. Can you hear us? Looks like he's typing. Yeah. He is typing. Let me see. Okay. He's gone. But yeah, I mean I, I, I guess we, we have to start a, with something. I wanted to ask you, everybody or attendees, uh, to, if you can, uh, yeah, say a greeting in your, in your language, in your, yeah, obviously the country you, you are from. <laughs> and then we are going to try to read it. <laughs> so can you say hi in your, in your language? Everybody. I don't know if. if... Oh, hola. <laughs> okay, hola. Pozdrav. Pozdrav. <laughs> That's in. Hola. In, oh, okay. I forgot. <laughs> Bonsoir, bonjour, assalamu alaikum, namaste, salut, et tu fait. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you. Okay, so I will Hello. Hello, that was, that's an easy one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the only one I got right. In Ola. <laughs> and Sadu and Leo. Ki Ekirio. Kia Kiriwo. I don't know which country is that, but let's see. <laughs> okay, I don't. Oh, it's, it's those, going very fast. <laughs> those letters, I can <laughs> even. <laughs> I, I, can, I can read Arabic a little bit so I can see that. Oh, I see a oh. hello. <laughs> hello, yo, from Burundi. Okay. Okay. Baoni. Yoruba. Oh, it's Yoruba. So it's from Nigeria, right? Oh, okay. Bawani. Are you using Google Translate? No, no, I am not. I am not, I promise. I am not. Habari Zenu. I know that's Swahili. Oh, okay. Okay, this one I'm having. Men Ajizarit. Men Ajizarit. I very, sorry, my Arabic is very bad, but I. And mine is an existent. Yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How are you? Okay. Oh yes, Kasim. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Algeria. Algeria. Okay. Oh, he's from Algeria. Okay. Uh, Min Algeria. Al Algeria. Okay. 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 <laughs> Oh, he's from Nigeria. Yeah. Yes, yes. I know it. I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> she speaks fluent Nigerian. Oh. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> that is so Affinity. cool. Affinity. So, yeah, that oh, is so cool. There's even someone from Guinea like me. Bonsoir. Oh, really? Yeah, bonsoir. Yeah. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> bonsoir to you. Oh, bonsoir. Ma yeah. Mamadou. 
y la la sa <laughs> that's um, that yeah that's pretty cool hi oh hi i know you jc larios <laughs> he's from guatemala okay. like me <laughs> how everybody is online but we can sit it, it and you guys all know each other it's like almost like you're in a physical school you know yeah yeah well we have people also from a you know a, anybody can join this okay. these are open so yeah. you know what i think we should start the meeting right now a start the all webinars right. i'm gonna hit the record button okay uh, where is it oh it's actually recording Already. Well, we there you go. Oh, that's amazing because we're we're having all the greetings in the video. Yeah. So, <laughs> so let me start uh, by. Um, yeah. So yeah, hello everybody again. Uh, thank you for being on time, and uh, yeah, welcome to another episode of Launch and Learn. Uh, yeah, Launch and Learn with Microverse. My name is Maru. I'm from Guatemala. I was here with Kingsley, but he's not here anymore. But hopefully he'll join us. He's from Nigeria. And uh, yeah. So shout out to all the people of this webinar today. Thank you for joining early and let us know where are you coming from and where are you from and your dreams. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sorry, we mispronounced some of, of oh, all of them. <laughs> it, it was so cool to, to see them. So, uh, well, now some introductions for you guys. Uh, I'm going to give a, a, a short background uh, about my career. And uh, then, uh, yeah, introduced to our awesome speaker today, which is Ibrahim Fialo. <laughs> And and then Ibrahim, yeah, he's going to uh, tell us about all his, his experience in, yeah, as a junior developer. <laughs> so after the presentation, yeah, I'm gonna ask all, um, yeah, I'm gonna ask him all your questions uh, that you have to write in the Q and A section. Uh, the Q and A section. I mean, the chat. You can put it in the chat, and it's going to give you the option to put it in the Q and A section. But please go to the Q and A section to vote for the ones that you want. You want me to ask. And yeah, the most voted ones. That those are the ones that I'm going to ask, and then we're we're, we're gonna close. <laughs> so. So uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the the introduction to microverse. So, yeah, you the ones that uh, aren't a students in this meeting, they or or guest attendees. <laughs> well, should be wondering what is microverse. So, yeah, I'm glad you ask. A microverse is a remote program for anyone aspiring to become a software developer. It is completely free until you get a job. Uh, so currently there are students from over 95 countries and counting. So it's a big community. Uh, we have different courses in our program ranging from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, Ruby, React, and Ruby on Rails to algorithms and data structures. Uh, the program is full time, uh, usually from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., Monday to Friday. Uh, and it involves learning with a partner through Pair programming. And every couple of weeks, we organize lunch and learns like this <laughs> to, uh, yeah, give different perspective for professional software developers. And we also have this lunch and learns open to the general public. So we hope to inspire others. And there's a lot more uh, info about Microverse in the website. So do feel free to check the ads. And that's all for me now. Uh, well, I mean, for the microverse introduction. And okay, now the reason we are all here. I hope you're ready. <laughs> uh, so today we have the brilliant Ibrahim Diallo, Diallo with us. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <The name. laughs> 
<laughs> so Abraham Diallo is a software engineer, two times founder and tech blogger currently in the state of California. Uh, he's from Guinea, yeah, but he lives in California. <laughs> and he's a veteran programmer that, uh, that has worked professionally for 12 years. Uh, and he now works at a startup called Thankful, right? Yeah. Where he built an automated customer service support agent. <laughs> He's also an entrepreneur and has a good experience working with AI and machine learning. So hi, Ibrahim. Hi. Thank you for taking the time to do this lunch and learn with us. It means a lot. Uh, I'll turn the webinar over to you in just one second, but I'm sure viewers will have many questions as the talk progresses. So can I just take this moment to remind you all to put the questions in the Q&A section instead of the general chat? And please, please try to keep them uh, relevant to the topic. Uh, please don't make questions about salaries because it's different in every part of the world, you know? So just uh, focus to the main theme here. <laughs> uh, we'll try to answer as many as we can after the talk and okay, Ibrahim. The floor is all yours, and <laughs> thank you. All right, well, thank you so much, Maria. Um, it's a pleasure being here. Um, I'm definitely excited. I, I, I think I already spoke uh, with a few of you guys uh, before this uh, uh, before this webinar, and I, I I learned a lot already. And and um, uh, many of you knows that I talk too much. Uh, so for the few who spoke with me, they know like uh, we were scheduled like ten minutes, but. It was, talked for, for quite a while. Again, um, so to get started, my background, uh, I'm Ibrahim. I work uh, in uh, as a software developer. And um, I started my whole uh, experience uh, with computing when I was uh, five year old. Uh, we had our we got our first computer, then my father got a computer. But the trick is that he didn't get the computer for me or for anyone in a particular in the family. He got it from himself in his office. But being a five-year-old, um, every time I left school, the first thing I did was go straight to his office, tell him to leave the keys behind, and I will come back home when I'm done. Um, I'm not sure why he trusted me with that, but I'm very glad he did uh, because he gave me uh, the first exposure of uh, working with a computer. Um, uh, unsupervised this was 1992 so it wasn't like we had access to the internet or anything but it was exciting to try a new device that was you know the top of the line technology uh, back then and it gave me uh, this understanding that led me to work as a programmer today and um, the first thing I wanted to do when I started reusing computers was to build a robot so I had uh, this um, inkling of learning about, you know, what makes a robot work, what makes um, what makes it think. Like I, I, I couldn't just think about int artificial intelligence because, you know, I was a kid. I wasn't familiar with all these terms, but I knew that I had to learn uh, a way to think about compu how how computers could think. And my um, experience was trying to learn. Um, I'm computing online using, um, uh, unfortunately, all the information was only available in English, and I did not speak English. My first language at least was uh, French back then. So I tried as much as I could, but it didn't go anywhere. Um, but at least it exposed me to um, reading uh, new information about computing. So naturally, when I grew up a little more, I decided to um, become a programmer. So I went to school, uh, sorry, I didn't no, I decided to become an electronic engineer. So I went to college to become an electronic engineer. I uh, spent two years um, looking uh, for things like uh, like you know any, anything that could get me in that direction uh, for me school wasn't just about getting good grades uh, but instead uh, it was about getting experience and uh, oh I see a few messages in here saying that they cannot hear me well uh, I think the Kim Lee's microphone is on <laughs> 
So if anybody can uh, have a Kinsley reduce the, <laughs> the micro. Uh, well, I, I can't hear it. So if anybody can still hear me, I, I can continue. Okay. Oh, looks like, oh, okay. Looks like uh, it's good. All right. So let's get back <laughs> at it. So anyway, I went to school to become a, an, an electronic engineer and I spent two years studying anything electronic related. But um, one day I stumbled into this uh, class, JavaScript class, and I said, let me just give it a, a shot. Let's see what this is all about. Because, you know, I haven't been programming consistently before, but I gave this class a shot and I immediately fell in love with it. Um, I thought it was so exciting. It was so fast. It wasn't anything like, you know, um, compiled languages that I learned before. I had learned C and C++, but JavaScript was a completely different beast. Like anything I wrote, I could test it right away. I could see it uh, in action. So one month into the class, I finished the entire book. I was so excited. I couldn't just stay home and wait. I finished every exercise. And then uh, I went to a friend's house and told him that, hey, I know how to do JavaScript. I know how to build a website. And we were watching a Lakers game. And while the game was going, we he, he gave me his laptop and I built a website for him on that very same night. And by the end of the day, I received a check of $100. So I hadn't been you know, studying electronic engineers for almost two years, but programming with JavaScript for just a month and I was able to make $100. I'd said, okay, definitely this is something I, I need to pursue. So I went back to school uh, the next day and I started charging uh, $10 for each student who wanted to be tutored by me and uh, made, it wasn't a lot of money, but still it allowed me to get started in this whole world of programming. And it uh, led me to, to, you know, to a, at least a, a career that I consider fruitful. So today I am a programmer or software developer or software engineer, whichever you want to do, it's all the same thing. Um, as you, I, I don't know if uh, you guys were aware, but this talk uh, wasn't titled how to make an impact as a junior developer in the beginning. Uh, they had me change that. But in the beginning, I called it uh, success when you are not the smartest programmer in the room. And the reason I wanted to call it that, even though it's like not as motivational as this great title we have here, is because the reality for me is when I started working, I felt stressed out. I felt like everyone was smarter than me. Um, I come to a room with people who all graduated from college. By the way, I dropped out after my programming escapade. But everybody else was very professional. They had the degree. And I thought that I was the stupidest guy in the room. But what I ended up learning was that like a few years down the line was that people thought, oh, look, we have a new uh, front end developer. He must be so smart. Uh, and some people were like, oh, they're afraid of their job because now I'm there. So we had these two different ideas. I was afraid of them. They were afraid of me. And unless you know about it, you, you start to feel this imposter syndrome. So I came into the job market thinking I'm, the, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but everybody else thought I was the smartest guy in the room. So that's one of the things that you want to uh, get it over with, at least when you get started as a, as a developer, uh, is to not uh, underestimate yourself. So usually I don't like giving um, like, you know, three or four tips of what you should do when you're a junior developer, but I'll make an exception today and give you a little, uh, a little list that I think can help you. So number one that I wrote down is make mistakes and be accountable for them. So sooner or later, you're going to uh, encounter something that you are not too familiar with at, at work. And if you hesitate too much, and, try, and don't make any progress, you will not learn a lot. But if instead you just say, you know what, it's fine, I'll just try it and maybe it will fail. Especially if, you, if you're working in a, in a company, uh, you will have uh, a team who'll be able to give a second look at your code. So you, just, you should just write whatever that comes into mind and then if there are mistakes, well, there are mistakes. There's nothing you can do about that, but you can learn from those mistakes. If your supervisor tells you, hey, by the way, the code that you uh, 
uh, committed last week, uh, things weren't working, that's totally fine. You should be open to uh, get that criticism and then learn from it. Um, the second thing I wrote here is don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, the thing about asking questions is the first time you ask a question and someone gives you an answer, your first thought will be, oh my God, that was, why did I ask this stupid question? And it will make you, you know, increase your imposter syndrome again, but it's crucial that you ask those questions that you consider stupid because without asking them, you will never know where you need to make some improvements or anything of the like. So get those, uh, like anytime you feel like you have a question, just ask them. If, you, if someone gives you like an obvious answer, that's totally fine. Um, just uh, take that information and improve yourself. And uh, the third thing that I wrote down here is when there's a new opportunity, when there's a new uh, program or anything that you're asked to do at work, just say yes. Even if you're like 12% sure, just say yes. All the, the extra 88%, you will figure it out along the way. Um, one reason I say that is because even at my current job, when I st at, at Thankful and working in AI, when I came here, I had zero experience with AI. But every single thing they asked me to do, I'll be like, okay. And every single thing they asked me was a new adventure for me. I had to go and figure things out. What does this thing mean? Uh, how can I make a computer have a conversation with, a, with another person and still be useful? Um, it definitely like saying yes to these things brought a whole new opportunity that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be possible for me otherwise. So yeah, say yes to those uh, questions. And uh, the last thing I wrote in my notes here uh, about what you should try to cultivate is patience. So when you start something, no matter how prepared you come, uh, you will see some something new that you don't understand. And you will feel overwhelmed and not know what to do and think again that you're not the smartest guy in the room. But the only way to become the smartest guy in the room is to have patience. Uh, just be let yourself be exposed to all these new ideas, uh, even those that you don't understand. And especially when you don't understand them, don't get overwhelmed. Just give it time. Reread the same things. Re read um, um, a little more about it online. We have access to you know the internet, to Wikipedia, to Stack Overflow. So anything you need, um, take the time to read about it and give it time. Sometimes when you read it the first time, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you have to wait, you know, the next day or maybe a week and suddenly it will just click. So take your time uh, with that and cultivate patience. So again, I want to talk a little bit about the, my current job. I work at Thankful and what we do is customer uh, automated customer service. So basically when you go on a website online and you purchase something and for some reason, you know, there's a delay on your shipment or, you know, there's um, anything uh, wrong with your order. What you want to do, what, what you usually do is go and email the company, whether through their contact form or just write an email. And what I do is use the, that information, the emails that you sent, capture them all for companies and try to process and understand what it is. So we build a um, an AI that can read those emails, know if it's like, if the customer is asking to track an order, if whatever they, their shipment was damaged, or if they want to know like sizing of some uh, product or any, all these type of things. So our AI can understand that and then uh, follow us a very carefully written script that can help uh, the customer resolve that problem. When I first heard about that, when I joined this company, I was like, wow, why the hell did I apply here? But it didn't, uh, it didn't take too long for me to dive into the code. By the way, a code that I was not familiar with, I usually work with uh, uh, C Sharp or PHP or Ruby on Rails, but here it was my first time being introduced to Go. And I definitely felt like I was not productive at all in the beginning, but just taking the time to read and to ask uh, the original person who built that tool, like what were the intention, how, like what, what, what it is that they were trying to achieve and reading the code helped me, you know, get a better understanding 
and uh, be able to be productive in a, you know in in less than a month. And um, for for perspective, um, AI uh, can be written in any language really, but if if you uh, oh and it's not it's also uh, a process of discovery because there's no company in the world today that has a solid plan for ai everybody is still trying to figure things out you know um every if you go from if if you're working in ai and you go from company to company you'll notice that everyone is using different tools to process to to do the same thing so we're still in a process of discovery so knowing that we are still discovering things makes it easier for me because it, it, it makes me realize that, okay, it's not that, you know, I have a lack of knowledge. Everybody has a lack of knowledge in this. So we are all discovering together and trying to figure out. So having, um, being in a talk like this with you guys um, who are learning to program, I think it's very, uh, it's going to be very useful in the future because all of you are bringing something new to the table. Um, you're, you're joining a field that has not been completely defined you will be the one defining it as you go along. Um, one example that I can give you of that is, I don't know if any of you are familiar with jQuery. Um, jQuery is a JavaScript library. And before it, before we had access, things like React or Redux and all that, those framework, everybody used uh, jQuery. And the reason they use it is because the browser was broken. The guy who wrote uh, uh, jQuery, John Rezig, he did it because you know he wanted to make his life easier. And by creating that tool, he ended up changing the way JavaScript works in the browser. So before it was like, he would look at the way JavaScript works and build a tool to compensate for its shortcoming. And now browsers looked at his tool and see all the advantages it has. And then they re-implemented these advantages into the browser. So he defined the way JavaScript works today. So when you use, so if you're not hearing a lot about uh, jQuery today, is because he did a fantastic job already. Um, he changed the way we write code on the browser. So you guys are learning um, a lot of programming concepts in this uh, in that microverse, and it might sometimes you feel like this is final. Just learn these things, and then you get to be uh, to do a job. But in the future, uh, you will be the one possibly defining the way things work in the browser. So take your time to, to figure out, uh, uh, to, to read a, a little more about programming, just not, not just uh, how, like, let's say, syntax work and, uh, you know, a few, uh, you know, algorithm. But instead, try to learn about uh, programming in general, about the art of it, and it will most likely lead you into a fruitful career for sure. Um, I wrote one thing here in my notes and I, uh, it, it was originally titled advice. And I wanted to just think about what advice I can give you if you are, if you're entering the programming world, especially if you want to start a career. And the only thing I can think of was to write this, just read. And the reason reading is important, not necessarily like reading about a programming language, but to read about um, the philosophy behind programming. Um, there's two people that I highly recommend you read. One of them is uh, Joel Spolsky. I'm pretty sure every single one of you is familiar with Stack Overflow. Uh, Stack Overflow was founded by Joel Spolsky. And the second guy is uh, Jeff Atwood. He's also a co-founder of, uh, of uh, uh, Stack Overflow. So the reason I think those two people are very important to read about, you can check, just Google them, you'll find their blogs. These guys uh, talk more about the philosophy and ideas behind programming instead of just talking to you about a particular programming language. Um, one example, uh, Joel Spolsky. Um, I read on his uh, blog since, uh, went for, the first thing I read about him was how Unicode worked. And Unicode is the way, you know, everybody use uh, emojis today and we don't really think about it. But before this was a common thing, every single person that writes, that ad, creates an application that can display emojis had to come up with a sort of like uh, encoding uh, interface. But 
the way the, the fact that he wrote that article and gave like a very good definition of how things uh, philosophically how things are supposed to work makes it easier for the rest of programmers to f to sort of come up with a standard so even for, for example my own websites i never cared about supporting unicode until i started reading about it there and understanding the advantages and a good implementation of it a standard implementation that can work you know, in the long term. So, Joel Spolsky was some some is someone that I highly recommend you read. Um, go to his blog, Joel on Software. There's tons of information. The first day I discovered it, and I, I loved it so much that I uh, went on the archive page and read his very first article written, I think, in two in the year 2000 until today. There's thousands of them, but I read every single one of them. The same thing for Jeff Atwood. I think reading his content is extremely important. It, it teaches you uh, not just programming, but also how to uh, build stuff for humans. Um, there's a, a very powerful concept that uh, maybe some of you have heard about. It's called just-in-time nudge. For example, I don't know if you know notice, on YouTube, um, let's say five years ago, if you go to any video and you try to read the comments, it will just make your eyes bleed. <laughs> you would not want to read those comments because everything was very offensive and all that. Today, it's better. It's much better for sure. And the reason for that is because they use uh, just-in-time nudge. Just-in-time nudge is a way for people to, uh, to understand that when you write a comment online, you're not just writing it on the ether. You're writing it for other human beings to, to, to read it. And just in time nudges, when you go to YouTube, you start typing and it gives you a warning. Hey, uh, try not to be too offensive uh, or, oh, it says that my uh, internet is slow here. Oh, okay, if you can still see me, yeah. Anyway, just in time nudge um, reminds you that there's a human being on the other side and tries to give you advice. Hey, don't be too mean to them because you know they're reading this. Um, if you're in Stack Overflow and you try to comment somewhere you get those little messages like hey if, if let's say you write a long messages that looks like a rank like a rant like something angry um stack overflow will automatically tell you hey by the way um try to keep uh stay focused on the message instead of the person you know try to criticize the idea not the person these type of things um these things looks basically they don't seem very important but um, having them there makes a whole difference. It makes YouTube comments readable. It makes uh, Stack Overflow be able to have more than you know 15 million developers and still be able to have a good conversation there. You know, it helps you communicate uh, in in a mass. So, have a, a concept like these are not something that you will learn in a programming book. Instead, you have to look at it in a philosophical book and hopefully a philosophy that uh, is aware of the internet and of our, mo and our modern times. Um, I think uh, I've been talking for a while, but I would like to end with a few things that I wrote here about um, you guys and about microverse and about diversity, because I saw the, uh, just looking at your names, I see that every single one of you come from a different place. And I think that is going to be fantastic. Right now, you know, um, the software engineering world is very uh, monocultural. There's only one type of people <laughs> working as programmers. And I think having you guys all in here, bringing a, a diff coming from a different background will make programming better. Um, I, like a, a couple of months ago, I wrote an article on the BBC to tell about this story, the fact that I am usually the only black person in every single company that I go to, and there is, a, you know, there's a, there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of ways that we can try to fit, uh, solve that. But I think the most important way is to look at education and to bring um, people of all back different backgrounds in early on rather than try to say, okay, let's just hire more, you know, black, more Asian, more whatever. It's better to say, let's go and train those people early on. And I think you guys here reflect this diversity. There's a, 
uh, I said uh, hello. Oh, and I see Abu Bakar Diallo right there that I spoke uh, before, or and uh, Pablo, or Are, or Maria. Everybody has uh, comes from someone else. And I think if we want uh, technology to be more equitable, to be better, we need you guys to become the programmers of the future. Um, so yeah, I hope that in the little babbling that I've been doing for uh, for a little while here that you, you know, at least will keep a thing or two in mind uh, and that this will become uh, a catalyst into making you, you know, uh, that, that like it becomes like a motivation for you to keep going in this field and to not give up. And um, yeah, so, Again, thank you so much for having me here and uh, go on and be great at be, become a great programmer. So thank you. Now you just have to look at my face until the next uh, uh, until the next uh, moderator comes in. <laughs> By the way, I had uh, I think I had unscrolled the the chat, so I couldn't see everything you guys were saying in real time. Now I'm looking at it. <laughs> well, thank you too. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now I feel good about myself. <laughs> now, now, now I'm aware of my face. I keep seeing my face, so I, I, I I'm, I'm too shy. I wanna, I wanna hide my face now. <laughs> Ibrahim. Hey, Maria. Hi, hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for the talk. I just want to say that, uh, yeah, it impressed me the. What you say about a keeping, you know, the a cordial trait to people because, after yeah. all, I mean, at, at the end of it all, we are people and we should a, treat each other with respect, and that mm -hmm. will take us, you know, very far. I I, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I use it all the time. I use Grammarly to perform code reviews and sound oh, okay. friendly. <laughs> so, so it's very important. I think that's the key to everything. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much. I'm going to start with the questions that our viewers put in the Q&A. So the first one, the most voted one, a from Amita Roy. Yeah. It says, what is your advice on most common requirements, which every employer asks for from a junior developer? For requirements? Oh, I, I definitely think that requirements are overrated. So the, the reason is um, the person who writes the, uh, the job uh, advertising is usually not the person who is requiring a new developer in their team. So sometimes, uh, let's say, if I want a new developer in my team, I'll go and talk to HR. And then HR is the one who's going to go and make a job post. And unfortunately, HR cannot understand my exact needs. I might explain it to them, but what they're going to do is like, oh, okay, I just need someone who has a, a, a bachelor in computer science or uh, and uh, has, you know, five year experience or 10 years experience. And usually this it it doesn't really help the case. For example, my own case, like sometimes uh, I look at my case where I, I don't have a computer science degree. I'm still a software engineer. I worked with uh, companies, I worked with, uh, you know, AT&T with Fortune 10 companies, and I have a lot of experience. But the fact that uh, I don't have, uh, I, I will list the name of the schools that I went to, but I don't have a hard computer science degree. It's supposed to be a, you know, a roadblock for me. But the, the advantage of the internet or, or of software engineering is that most of the time we hire people uh, we, we can see people's work, you know. So let's say I read the resume and someone shows that he doesn't uh, he doesn't have a degree or he, he's not exceptional with algorithm. At least I can go, let's say, to his website and see if he worked on his pro on any project. I can see his GitHub 
to see what type of things he has worked on. So I don't have to rely on a degree or some unrealistic demands. I can go and see their work and say, okay, this guy might be important. This girl might, uh, you know, be able to move us forward or something like that. I hope this answers the question. Yeah. Okay. That's very good because yeah, it's, it's, it's good to keep a good profile online. Right. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, also one thing it's important to have GitHub, but what I think me personally, what I think is more important is to have a stack overflow account. Okay. Because stack overflow is the best way to improve your communication skills and programming is about programming, but it's most importantly about communication, you know, because you're rarely going to be the only person working on a project. You'll be working with a team. So your communication is key to making that team better. Okay, that's a great advice. Thank you, Ibrahim. So next question. It says, Linux experience seems to be a highly valued skill, but I'm not entirely sure what it means. What is knowing Linux? <laughs> yeah, knowing Linux is definitely very important and you and it's confusing. It's like telling you, you need to know the iPhone, you know? So what it means really is to be familiar with it. Like, um, I think the most uh, over uh, underrated skill when it comes to a computer programmer is installing software. And knowing Linux really means knowing how to install software in Linux. For example, you know, um, if you, let's say you're programming something in React and you're going to be using NPM, uh, understanding how NPN works, how you can, uh, how to install stuff, how to remove stuff, being familiar with the, you know, uh, we're creating like a bash script. These are the things that uh, that you do on a mo on a daily basis. For example, in my current company, I might, well, not this one, but let's say when I used to work at AT and T, they built uh, an application that relies entirely on bash. Bash is just like the, the command line for, for Linux, and he had more than 5,000 lines of code. So being familiar with Linux was the only way I was going to be able to work with that. It didn't matter what programming language I was familiar with, but understanding the computer itself was what I needed to do. So if you want to have more experience knowing Linux, just download Ubuntu. It's free. Get a If you have a spare laptop, get that and install it and play with it. Yeah, yeah, that's the best advice. <laughs> Thank you. So, okay, next question. This this one is is very good. There are quite a lot of interview questions, especially technically, uh, both theories and practical ones. Uh, how does one manage to crack and be good at these interviews? Uh, yeah. Emmanuel Okello is asking. <laughs> well, Emmanuel, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're going to have to learn algorithms. <laughs> It's not, it, okay, on a daily basis, I do not use any algorithm. Like if I want to sort something, the programming language I'm using has a sort function. That's just the way things are. Like if I had to implement sort every single time, sure, I will memorize it. But the last time I did sorting was when I was in college. And, you know, that's a long time ago. So unfortunately, jobs are still telling, you know, uh, new candidates to do like a, bubble sort or anything like that. So the only advice I can give is like, try to learn those. Um, even if it's just for the interview, learn them as fast as you can um, and try to master it. And also it's even if you don't use a sorting algorithm, understanding how algorithm work is gonna be useful for your career as a programmer, you know. Practice those algorithms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. And okay, this is a long one uh, from Leonard Pop. Uh, being new to a company, you're trying to impress your manager or higher ups, but at the same time, meaning you will have to spend a lot of time trying to understand the base code, uh, evolve your skills to match the requirements, and so on. At the same time, I personally feel that you don't want to give your free time to them as you have other projects you want to work on. How would you handle this and combine both of them? Hmm. I, I think uh, that's a def definitely a good question. And I think um, there's definitely going to have to be a balance. But there's one skill that I can recommend you try to learn. And that is to learn how to work with broken software. 
I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, what what this means is you don't have to understand how an entire fleet of software works before you can actually work on it. So um, one example of that is even this company where I'm working, where you know we're using machine learning, we're using AI, and saying that I have to spend a lot of time to learn how this works before I can do anything in order because I will need to understand it in order to impress the CEO or the CTO. But that will take too much time. Instead, I like to focus on small parts that are the small parts that are broken. For like, for example, they say, oh, we are having an issue with the way we do translation. Instead of understanding how all the AI works, just focus on translation and try to fix that. You know, it, it's that and I call it broken software because it's like just try to put a patch on that little broken part. And then it allows you to, you know, impress your manager by being active early on, but at the same time, you're not completely aware of how the entire system works. That's something I do often, especially because my younger sister is also trying to become a programmer. And that's the advice I always give her. Don't try to understand the whole thing. Focus on small little part and try to fix that. Wow. I hope that answers your question. That's a great advice, actually. I, I believe the same, like mm -hmm. learning through fixing bugs. Yeah. That's that's what I like. <laughs> but anyways, uh, next one from Cone Abdel Kader Raz. Mm -hmm. I am a young developer with a little experience. I'm most of the offers in my country were one full stack developers with three to four years of experience, I guess. What do you think of the fact that uh, for some developer must be generalist and no specializes in a given technology? Um, well, I think I, I consider myself a full stack developer and I touch a little bit of everything. And uh, before I started my first professional job, um, I before I applied, I had zero experience. So obviously everybody asking for three, four years experience and I didn't have one. But the advantage is you can create that experience. Um, I created a website. Uh, so first thing I did is like I go look at a job offer and I see the type of things they ask for. And then I went and created a website that does something similar in a smaller scale, of course, and then try to make, make, it, make it look as polished as possible. This trumps the, the years of experience. So if you go to an interview, they ask you like, what have you done in the past or anything like that? You can just show them that. It doesn't matter if you did it in a week or in three years it shows that you have something. So it's, like I said, it's important to have the GitHub account. It's important to have Stack Overflow account to show a record of the things you did, even if you didn't work in an actual job. But it's also important to have a website with things you can show, you know. So show, don't tell. Yeah, yeah amazing answer. And just, just a quick yeah reminder that in Microverse, we mm -hmm. do that. We have our GitHub. We have all our projects. Yeah. We build a portfolio. So that's, that's definitely yeah. Especially when I'm hiring, <laughs> that's what I look at. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. So okay, next question: How important are coding challenges to get in a developer job as a junior? Is like kind of like the one that you just answered. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the algorithms are yeah. <laughs> really important. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Just uh, it, it's special, and also it's fun, you know. Learn, like going through that, going through like especially if you're doing a, a coding challenge with other people, um, you know, it's fun. It gets you more excited about the world of programming. So I definitely recommend uh, you do it. It's not crucial, but it's definitely uh, important to have it. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Um, I think we're gonna ask one or a couple more <laughs> yeah a couple more so how important a uh, mateo mojica asks how important and value are soft skills as a junior developer how much weight a uh, sub knowledge would you give them into the overall destination of higher and junior developer 20 to 80 percent or 40 60 yeah you I'm, I'm a big fan of soft skills you know i i yeah it's it's uh, i think so I would definitely love, let's say uh, I have, I need someone to do a particular job, 
I'll be very happy if they are specialized in that, like they have amazing knowledge and all that. But I also like when someone comes in, they're not top of the line, but they, uh, they let's say they're junior. So they bring some experience or some, some they, they don't have the same baggage as someone who has a lot of experience. You bring something new to the table. So every time I work, like recently we had like 10 interns and it was so much fun to work with them because they see things that we have become blind to, you know, um, things that seem obvious to them because, you know, they're not thinking about all the baggage. We are blind, but they get to see that. And they t once they tell us, we're like, how come we never thought of that? You know, so bringing uh, other skills like soft skills into the into all this is uh, definitely something that at least for me personally, I think is important. And and what will be like the how important is this? Is it 50-50 or no, yeah, I'll I'll be 40-60. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Or is it that's good? <laughs> so uh well last question over here. Just yeah, I guess they can add you. Can you share with us the your LinkedIn and or social media, Twitter, so they can ask you questions later on of, of because course. we have limited time guys but thank you yeah. all for participating and yeah yeah i will i will so i i tweeted uh, recently with uh, you know saying that i'll be having a talk here um i'm i'm active on twitter um meaning mm -hmm. i read messages that come my way but i am more active on my own website so okay, will, can, yeah if you yeah. want to share it in the chat, that will be amazing. Yeah. So, but let me ask you the last question. Sure. <laughs> yes. sure. Okay, Emmanuel Okel again. Uh, well, we already asked you. I asked questions about that. Okay, I, this one won <laughs> two votes. Nicolas, <laughs> how do you bypass an application that strictly says uh, they want people with at least X years of development. You mentioned that the internet allows you to showcase your work, but if at the very beginning you are filtered out, how can someone overcome this? Yeah. How? Yeah. That's a good well, <laughs> one uh, one thing uh, that's not too obvious, but try to find someone that works there. Uh, go through Twitter. Go through LinkedIn, and that type of thing. Um, I think uh, all my jobs that I had at least the last three, four jobs was through some connections uh, and make, make use of it. If you, if you know someone that works in a company, try to talk to them. If you don't know them, but you're interested in that company, go through their LinkedIn, uh, go through their Twitter or anything like that. Because uh, remember at the end of the day, we're doing all this for humans. So try to have those human con connections. That, that's what's gonna bring you forward. Yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, we actually have at Microverse, we have a, a task mm -hmm. for that. It's an invitation to connect. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's amazing. Everything mm -hmm. you're saying, we have it. Perfect. Sorry. Well, maybe I'm, I'm I should be part of uh, of Microverse. <laughs> yeah, you should you should join Microverse. <laughs> so, okay, I sadly this is all the time we have. It, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. You're amazing. And um, yeah, big thanks to you, Ibrahim, for doing this. Uh, any parting words that you have for our viewers? Um, like, uh, you know, um, I know there's way too many of you, but you know, if you have questions, feel free to ask me on social media or through email. I also answer to email. It, take, it takes me a little while, but I take my time to answer. So if you have, uh, questions if you need some pointers like let's say you get a job interview but you don't not you don't you have questions you want to prepare a little bit feel free to email me and i'll try my best to you know help out okay thank you very much Ibrahim. Right. there you have it so that brings us to the uh, end of this launch and learn i hope we see you all in the next one so uh, yeah take care and bye happy coding Thank you. Right. Yeah, I see. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>